Tell everybody, if you want to send in a text, send it to 8778, text the word EDGE, then a space, then your message. If it's too long, it gets chopped off, I'm afraid, so short messages are better. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go and see another clip now. Um, we... Uh, I've only got 47, so we're not going to see another clip. Uh, before the break, that is. Um, William, uh, can you give us a bit of insight into Building 7? You know, there have been people saying that it was brought down by the flames of fires that were burning as a result of the World Trade Center. Is that possible? <laughs> well, if it were possible, it's never happened before, except for Tower 1 and Tower 2 that it fell, you know, earlier in the day. Uh, I this is the thing, though, when it first happened, that very first day that it happened. Okay, uh, have... William, I've got to break you now. We're going for another break. Once again, if you'd like to text in your messages, do it soon. See you after the break. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, bye. <laughs> Welcome back to On the Edge, and tonight we're talking about 9-11 in plain sight, the film about what may really have happened on September the 11th, 2001. We're going to go straight to another clip from the film, which, by the way, we're showing live here, I beg your pardon, we're showing the film for its UK television premiere on the 22nd of October, that's 22 October, at 8.30pm, that's well worth watching, but here's another clip from it. On April 15th of 2004, we received a news release that alerted us to a website that was entitled www.letsroll911.org. Phil Jahan, the webmaster for this website, had taken the video clips that you've just seen and slowed them down and examined them frame by frame, and what he found was astounding. There are several different anomalies that need to be examined and questioned. First of all, what is attached to the bottom of the plane that hit the South Tower? And second of all, what is that brief flash that occurs just as the plane makes impact? Now, when we first looked at this video footage, I said to myself, well, this video footage could very well be manipulated. So I wanted to check it out myself. Well, we went and found the DVD that we had purchased shortly after September 11th entitled America Remembers. This was directly from CNN. We took this DVD and put it in our machine and examined the very clip that you've just seen. Let's take a look at it. Let's take another look at this clip in slow motion. But before we do, keep in mind that sometimes the best place to hide something is in plain sight. We've all seen this video clip, and there have been many publications that have taken frames from this video and published them in hundreds of magazines. Here's an example. On page three, a full-size blow-up of this picture. And in this magazine, it was published on page four. And on the back of this book that we discussed earlier, it's on the back cover. I suggest you all take a copy of your magazines and books, and if you have the video footage, take a good hard look. We've all got this. Now let's take a look at this in slow motion. As the plane approaches the South Tower, notice carefully the belly of the plane. There appears to be something attached, and just as it hits the building, there's a flash. Let's take another look in super slow motion. Let's look at this photograph that was taken near ground zero. On the right, we see the south tower, and the smoke that's rising into the sky is emanating from the north tower, which is completely hidden from view. On the left, just entering the field of vision of the camera, we see the plane just before it hits the South Tower. Note a couple of items here. The engine on the right wing has a shadow, and the shadow moves towards the front of the plane and off of the plane. So the anomaly that appears to be attached to the belly of this plane could not be caused by a shadow. Also note that the item that appears to be attached to the belly of this plane is on the right side. This plane has something that is not symmetrical on the bottom of the plane. When we compare that with the bottom of a regular 767, we'll note that a normal 767 
has a belly that is smooth. This plane does not. In the summer of 2003, in Barcelona, Spain, a publication by the name of La Vanguardia did an investigative report on the plane that slammed into the South Tower. After a thorough digital image analysis performed by a Spanish university, the investigators came to the conclusion that the anomaly was three-dimensional in nature and could not have been caused by shadows or reflections. Question, is it outside the realm of possibilities that an object of this size and shape could be attached to the belly of a plane of this type? Well, that was amazing. William, um, I've got a, uh, a text here from a, a viewer who says, if the planes that hit were not the passenger planes stated, did those planes take off? If so, where are the passengers and terrorists? <laughs> well, my response to someone who says something like that is, uh, just go watch a TV program and I think you can figure it out. Uh, you know, these guys work with an unlimited black operations budget. And I'm sorry to, to break it to the American people, but when you want to dispose of uh, less than a couple of hundred passengers on those planes, there's ways to do it, guys. Um, so where the passengers are, I have no idea. Where those actual planes are, I have no idea. But what we do know is that, uh, you know, the official story that we're being given about those planes and some of these intricate details just don't add up. We know that Flight 93 landed in Ohio because they said there was a bomb feared aboard. This was a news report that came out on CNN, all right? And the mayor even confirmed it. So <laughs> here we go again. You know, here's another inconsistent fact. Um, some, one thing that's not in the documentary is we know that, um, or we've been told, and I won't say where we got this information from, but, um, you know, we were told that the first two planes that hit the first two towers uh, we're talking about flights 11 and flight 175. Um, there, are, there are reports that we believe that say those planes landed at an Air Force base and were offloaded, and those passengers were put aboard another plane. That's where the story ends. We don't know where it goes from there, but I think you can see where this goes. Well, they're, they're obviously not around anymore. I mean, their names were released, and, and their, their DNA was apparently identified at the Pentagon, but not at the uh, Twin Towers. Is that correct? Uh, I believe that is correct, yes. That's the story, isn't it? Um, I just wanted to ask you one more thing, because when we had a conversation on the phone uh, yesterday, you mentioned that something to me about um, people who might otherwise talk out about this, who were involved in some way unknowingly. Is, is there anything you want to say about that, William? Well, you know, people, people can't get a firm grasp around this thing, I don't think, because they, they may not understand the techniques that are used to keep people quiet. Um, you know, there are individuals out there who will say this is too big of a conspiracy to keep quiet. Too many individuals would be involved. Someone would speak out by now, and that's just not necessarily true. And it's not true because, you know, I have, uh, I have contacts within the, the state and the federal government who have pointed me in a completely new direction. And I believe now that the war games that were being carried out that day, we're talking about um, Vigilant Warrior and, um, you know, those, those three that were being carried out. Uh, one of those in particular, I believe Vigilant Warrior is the one where they were actually flying the planes into buildings. This was supposed to be simulated, but we know of seven individuals who were in a room helping to remote control pilot those planes. They happened to look over at a television monitor because they were watching the ball game. They weren't supposed to have the TV, and they see, you know, a plane is crashing into the, into the tower, and the guy turns to someone else and says, man, this is great special effects. We've never had this before. You know, <laughs> they begin to realize very slowly over a 30-minute period of time, they've just killed all these people. They crashed planes into live targets, okay? Um, those particular individuals wanted to speak out. They wanted to tell their story but they were kept quiet by officials in our own government who ended up kidnapping the children. The youngest children from each family member was kidnapped. Um, they won't speak out about it now. Most of them are very ill. They've all come down with the same symptoms. Sounds a lot like depleted uranium exposure or poisoning. William, so, you know, these people are slowly dying off. 
Uh, William, this is an extraordinary allegation. As far as I know, it's the first time it's ever been anywhere on the internet or broadcast. 